Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, RBI hikes repo rate. Before we understand what this topic is in greater detail, we have an announcement. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS would be conducting a free IAS workshop on 10th of December at 6 p.m. exclusively on our Baiju's Exam Prep application. What is the agenda of the free IAS workshop? We will give you in detail the study plan, book list and current affairs preparation strategy for the UPSC CSE and this session will be handled by Rohit Kumar sir. Let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. In India, it is the Reserve Bank of India which is interested with the responsibility of coming up with the monetary policy. The primary objective of the Reserve Bank of India is to maintain the price stability and this will also lead to the growth of Indian economy as well. So who decides the monetary policy in India? It is the Reserve Bank of India. We have the central government under Section 45ZA of the RBI Act which has fixed the CPI in inflation target at 4% with an upper tolerance limit of 6%. This basically means we have a flexible inflation targeting framework that the RBI is provided with. So the RBI is expected to maintain retail inflation at 4% with plus or minus 2%. So the upper limit is about 6 the lower limit is about 2. So this has to be maintained by the Reserve Bank of India. So if there is a breach of 6% and above or if it falls less than 2%, that is when the Reserve Bank of India is held accountable for its actions. So the Reserve Bank of India under Section 45ZN of the RBA Act will also have to submit a report to the central government as to why they failed to achieve the inflation target and they should also give remedial action plan as well. It is in this particular backdrop we will try and understand how RBI is planning to control the inflation. When it comes to the inflation, what is happening? India's headline inflation rate fell to a 3 month low at 6.7% for the month of October. It was about 7.4% in the previous month on a favorable base but still it is above the central bank's upper limit of 6%. So what do we see? In the month of October, it is about 6.7%. Earlier, it was 7.4%. But this also means that it is not within the bracket. What was the bracket that we discussed? Inflation targeting should be within 4. It can grow to the upper limit of 6 and to the lower limit of 2. But since it is not within this particular bracket, it has gone ahead of 6%. The RBI will have to regulate the inflation. So the Reserve Bank of India in the present situation has announced a 35 basis point hike in the repo rate and this happens to be the fifth rate hike since May 2022 taking the quantum of rate hikes to 225 BPS. If you look at how RBI has been increasing the basis points, let's go back to the month of May where it was about 4.40%. This was increased to 4.90%. It was further increased to 5.40%. It was increased to 5.90% and now it is about 6.25%. So the MPC decision to high rates comes in the backdrop of high inflation. So the RBI feels that there is excessive inflation in the market in order to reduce the inflation in the market, what they have increased is an increase in the repo rate. When we speak about retail inflation, it is the inflation that everyday consumers face. It is the rise in the general price level. And when inflation runs high, what we have is that RBI increases the repo rate. Now the question is, what is this repo rate? When it comes to the repo rate, repo rate can be defined as an amount of interest that is charged by the Reserve Bank of India while lending funds to the commercial banks. The word repo technically stands for repurchasing option or the repurchasing agreement. Both the parties are required to sign an agreement of repurchasing which will state the repurchasing of the securities on a specific date at a predetermined price. The repo rate in India is controlled by the Reserve Bank of India. Repo rate is the rate at which the central bank lends short term funds to the banks. 
one basis point is one hundredth of a percentage point. So by increasing the repo rate, what exactly happens? It incentivizes savings. People should be able to save more. It disincentivizes expenditure. So it is asking the people not to spend too much, thus curtailing overall demand and the GDP. This in turn reduces the inflation rate. So any changes in the repo rate can directly impact the economy. A decrease in the repo rate helps in improving the growth and economic development of the country. A decline in repo rate can lead to banks bringing down their lending rate which is beneficial for retained loan borrowers. Therefore, in times of the weak economic activity, RBI cuts the repo rate and when it is inflation, it increases the repo rate. All these critical decisions about the repo rate will be taken by the Monetary Policy Committee which meets once every two months to assess the inflation as well as the growth outlook. So we have the RBI governor Shakti Kantas who went on to say that since inflation is not coming under the bracket of the inflation targeting scheme in a battle against inflation and to make sure that the risk are controlled. It is the monetary policy committee and its majority which have said that they are going to withdraw the accommodative stance and what they will have is the hockey stance with respect to the repo rate. What is the impact on the economy? Lending rates of the banks will now be expected to go up as well. So how will it impact the borrowers? With the hike in the repo rates, what would happen? The borrowing costs are expected to increase. Home loans, personal loans, other credit facilities will also get costlier as well. Moreover, borrowers having floating rate interest payments will also suffer more. What will be the impact on the depositors? Depositors will stand to benefit from this as there is an increase in the rate of bank deposits interest rate. What are the other issues? EMIs on vehicle, home loans and personal loans will also rise as well. Marginal cost of funds, base lending rates which accounts for 49.2% of the loans portfolio of banks are also expected to move up and finally the hockey stone of RBI led to a decline in the market as well. Now the question is, what do we understand by the accommodative stance of the RBI? What do we understand by the neutral stance of the RBI? And what is this hockey stone of the RBI? When it comes to an accommodative stance, an accommodative stance is where the RBI is planning to expand the money supply in order to give boost to the economic growth. Let's assume for a moment that the economy is not doing good. So in order to give boost to the economy, what the RBI does is takes into picture the accommodative policy. During this particular period, there is cut in the interest rate. But when it comes to the hawkish policy, there is increase of the interest rate. So during the accommodative stance of the Reserve Bank of India, it will cut the interest rates and during the hockey stance it will increase the interest rate as well. These are some of the differences between the accommodative stance and hockey stance and whenever there is the hockey stance it increases the interest rate and ultimately what we will also witness is drop in the activities of the market. These are the likely consequences because of the rise in the repo rate. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.